Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I'm happy to introduce a new fork of the MU Elec firmware, which is called 351 Elec. Now, if that all sounds like foreign language to you, what I'm basically saying is there is a new operating system available for the RG351P that allows you to have the best of both worlds. It has the most updated version of MU Elec, which is 3.9, but it also has a partition on it that allows you to access the SD card from your computer itself. So you just plug the SD card in, drag your games over like you can do on the original firmware, but on top of that it has all the updates in Emulec, including the new PSP update, which gives you a faster gameplay experience. So I'm really excited about this one. I'm really happy with this developer who's been very, very helpful in coming up with this new solution. So let's check it out and I'll show you how to do the installation. Okay, so first things first, I'll have a link in the guide below that'll take you to the GitHub page. And then you just click on the releases button and then go to the most recent release. And given the fact that this person has already uploaded two different release candidates for this uh, firmware, I think that we're gonna see a lot more updates in the future. So just grab the most recent one. It'll have an image file, then download that. It'll be about 500 megs and then extract it, you know, use your unzipper or whatever else you're using to unzip it. And then you'll be left with an image right there. So once you have that downloaded and you have it unzipped, then go in and open Win32 Disk Imager. And this is the image software that you're gonna use. And if you're on a Mac, I'll leave the instructions below and how to do that on a Mac as well. So go into your computer, find that image that you just unzipped, and then make sure you have a new SD card put in there. And then you just hit the write button and that'll write it to the SD card and flash the new firmware onto that new SD card. Okay, so once that's done, all you have to do is just eject it and then put it into your device. Okay, so here we are with my SD card reader and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in my RG351. And all you have to do at this point is just turn it on. At that point, the software will create a partition for you that'll allow you to put your games on it. So just let it run through its program. It'll take a few seconds and then it'll reboot. Overall, this should take about a minute in between the rebooting and then starting it up for the first time. But after you've done it the first time, it'll go much more quickly. Okay, so here we are. This is the, uh, the theme that they have set here is just your primary theme, but you can go in and change all this kind of stuff just like you would with any other version of Emulec. And if we go into the system settings and then we look at the information tab, You'll see here that it says version 1.0 and that it's called 351 Elec and not MU Elec. So it's pretty cool that they were able to take the source of the MU Elec and kind of merge it with all the changes that Ambernic did to the system itself, which allows it to become its own thing. And we now we have this new operating system that looks really, really nice. So here I am changing it back to the regular theme that you would just expect to have uh, when you first turn on the RG351P after purchasing it. So now let's load it up with games. So turn off your device, take out the SD card and put it back into your computer. So now I'm gonna open up Disk Genius. You don't have to do this, but I just wanna show you what the partitions look like within the system. Okay, so you can see here, there are three different partitions. There's the 351 elec partition, and then there's the storage partition, which has all your configuration files. And finally, there's your games partition. And it automatically filled up the entirety of the SD card for you, which is pretty neat. If you go into that games partition, you can see all the folders are in there. And so all you have to do at this point is just grab your ROMs, move them over into the folder that's appropriate for your system, and that's it. Now, one word of warning is that this does not come with the BIOS files. So for PlayStation, Sega CD, things like that, so you can either grab those BIOS files from the original SD card that came with your device, or you can grab them off the internet. Okay, so you can see here, all the games are loaded up. You can actually go in, you know, set up your network, set up the scraping, do all those kind of things as well. So you can then have box art, all the things that I have in all of my different guides, which I'll link below in my starter guide. Okay, so here we are. You can see I scraped the Nintendo uh, box arts here, and it looks great. So let's start up a game. And really nothing much has changed in terms of the uh, experience, but the back end has been updated significantly from 3.7 all the way up to 3.9. And hopefully, you know, as Emulec updates itself, they'll be able to make updates to 351 Elec, and maybe they'll even make improvements upon Emulec in the future. Just something to think about. 
So one of the things I wanted to do was to verify that the PSP games still play really well. And you could see me here with Ridge Racer, it's playing rock solid. I mean, there's a few dips here and there, but overall I'm really happy with how this plays. And this is with a frame skip of one, so it's not a perfect experience, but still you can see I'm having a lot of fun playing this Ridge Racer game here. Now, because, you know, I always feel that honesty is the right policy, I just want to show that not every single game is going to play very well. You can see me here playing Call of Duty Roads to Victory, and it's just chugging. It's not playing very well. And so not every game is going to play well on the PSP. You know, this isn't going to be a catch-all fix for everything, uh, but a lot of games do play better now. Okay, that's really it for this video. I just wanted to show a down and dirty how to install it and what are the other features that it involves. And so uh, keep a lookout on this. And I think as the, we get new updates for this 351 Elec, I'll make more videos for it. But we're at a really exciting time with the 351P because as far as I know, there are three different people making three different operating systems for the 351P. And maybe at some point they'll actually team up and make some sort of Avenger style firmware, which has just got all the great things in it. Either way, it's just a really exciting time right now to be able to see that people are making improvements to this device because the hardware is perfect but the software could use some work and we have the community involved in doing that right now. It's a really neat feeling to know that you're buying this really great piece of hardware and there are people out there who are invested in making that experience better for you. And so I'll continue to make videos as I get new updates and whatnot but I really wanted to show off this one because it's pretty exciting. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Uh, overall, I think that I'm gonna end up just switching over to this new operating system. At this point, I don't find any reason to stay with the stock version, even with the updated PSP update that I showed the other day. I think this is gonna be my new operating system from now on until the next ones come out, but we'll see how that goes. But either way, I wanted to put this out there for you in case you're interested in upgrading your firmware as well. It's a very easy thing to do, and it has a lot of neat perks to it. Okay, that's it for now. We'll see you next time. Happy gaming.